Welcome back to Chicago Motor Speedway. Still under caution at round six of the Toyota Atlantic Championship. While we were away, Carl Russo and Alex Garcia pitted. Garcia is now out of the race. While we have a moment, here's Brian Till with a tech tip. With the Toyota Atlantic Championship being the elite series in the cart development ladder, the drivers in this series, they learn to deal with technology. Most Atlantic machines carry an onboard computer system that's capable of monitoring 32 different sensors at almost 1,000 times per second. Sensors like wheel speed sensors, brake pressure and throttle position transducers, sensors that measure the front suspension travel, steering angle put in by the driver, engine components, and rear suspension movement. After a session, a driver comes in, the engineer sits down next to the car with his laptop computer. He plugs into the side and downloads all that information into his laptop. What's it mean to the engineer? He gets great information that he can use to make the car work better. And what's it mean to the driver? Well, he doesn't always like it. And why is that? That's because the engineer, he's always faster. Well, if you had any doubt that these are high-tech race cars, that should dispel those doubts. The green is in the air once again. We are underway. And there's oh, an attack, Valiente under Fogarty. Fantastic restart on my on Michael Valiente's part. Very reminiscent of his pass for the lead at Long Beach. He got a great run, anticipated the restart, and now Hunter Ray alongside Fogarty. Yeah, that, that concrete wall at Long Beach was coming up a lot faster than the one here in Chicago. Fogarty goes to third. Still holding his breath from that pass from Valiente. What a great restart. Now, don't forget, and there's Yasukawa looking inside of Fogarty. Hunter Ray and Yasukawa as teammates were the fastest cars in this morning's warm-up. They found something. They've got a good setup on these race cars. And Fogarty looks like he is falling back into the clutches of Yasukawa. And Yasukawa in number nine with that Dayglow stripe on it was significantly faster than his teammate, two-tenths of a second. Scott Pruitt. I had a chance to talk to, to Roger, and what he said was, yeah, we found this up, but the biggest thing is we, we kind of got caught off our stride. We had that crash with Ryan's car, and unfortunately kind of got caught up with it and we didn't really get a good rhythm going and now things got turned around we got a good rhythm and now we're just going to move to front bob well he's got a car ahead of him on his march to the front in fact two of them yasukawa now third behind michael valiente and ryan hunter ray now there's a good look at rick cameron they valiente is very happy this weekend they have struggled for the past four or five races with a car that they could not find the problem with. The car was very nervous at turn in, and certainly on an oval, you don't want that. They put a new chassis underneath Michael this weekend. He's been at the top of the charts in practice and in qualifying. He is very happy, and this is going to pay great dividends in his run for the championship. Look at Hunter Ray down the inside, just drives past him. These Hilton cars were so fast at the Milwaukee Oval, and they're fast again here in Chicago. Poor John Fogarty, he is now well out of his first race lead since he won the season opener in the wet in Monterey, Mexico. He now runs fourth, and we have a yellow flag again. The Simple Green Safety Crew oh, heads for the racetrack. No, a spin. No. Oh, boy. Alex Figgy, and how disappointing. He has been, he was the fastest car in both practice sessions. Felt like they lost a little bit in qualifying by qualifying second. Only eight one thousandths of a second off the pole. He told me before the race, I'm just going to drive clean. I'm going to drive smart. I want to get a good finish out of this. And obviously, that is not to be today. Looks like he hit the wall. Can't see damage, but it appears Alex Figgy from Boulder, Colorado, and World Speed Motorsports, who started second in the field, his race is now run. Down to Scott Pruitt. I'm down here with uh, right in the middle of their pits, walking up to Mike. Mike, any idea what happened out there? He's talking again. Any idea what happened? I was just getting bad restarts, you know. I don't know what happened down there yet. I'll have to talk to the uh, the driver when he comes in. He's going to come in. We're going to look at the nose and see if it's just the nose or not. But uh, <laughs> those restarts were killing us. He's a rookie. I mean, I think he's learning a lot right now. <laughs> Thanks. There you go. A lot of these guys are rookies, and there is a lot to learn here at Chicago. Bob? Well, another example of what happens when you get up off that rubbered in line down low. It's a temptation in these cars. The champ cars are also running this weekend here at Chicago Motor Speedway. But these cars are significantly narrower in their track, and so the temptation to just move to the outside of that rubbered in line can be too much. And if you get into the gray, it's likely you're going around. We'll be back. Welcome back to Chicago Motor Speedway. Bob Varsha, Brian Till, and Scott Brewitt with you for round six of the Toyota Atlantic Championship for 2002. 
One lap to go under caution for the third time in this race following a spin and wall contact from Alex Figge. This is the view from Buddy Rice's car. On board with Rice, you can see him coming in to turn three and four, and Figgy just a little high there. Back in comes around, car just a little loose, as you've alluded to, Bob. Get out of that rubber in the middle of the corner and get up in the gray. You can lose the back end. We expect the green this time around quickly to Scott Pruitt. Stefan Dornick, engineer with Coronas, moving up extremely well, 16th to 8th. Yeah, he's doing very well. He's very happy with the car at the moment, but it's going to be another 55 laps here. We have to be a little patient. All right, best of luck. Bob? Thanks very much, Scott. The field comes around, single file, ready for the green flag. It waves. We're back underway on lap number 19. In that 20, Valiente protecting his line. Another great restart by Valiente all over the back of Hunter Ray, but Hunter Ray holds his position on board with Rice, working on Levine. Valiente has gotten great restarts. Buddy Rice shuffled to the back a little bit. He's moved back a little bit. You can see the great battles going on. Oh, Levine, Levine up high. Up the hill he goes, but he manages to keep it off the wall. And he can breathe now that he's down, back down on the front straightaway, but that'll take your breath away as a driver, getting up in that gray. And you saw Hunter Ray with the lead there, and maybe a little vindication for what happened at Milwaukee where he checked out. Oh, we've got another car. That's Dave Cutler in his 50th start, 26 car there. You see him on the racetrack. And he has obviously backed it in and taken off the rear wing. Looks like there might be some left rear damage on it, too. See the thumbs up to the medical crew when they get to him. Ooh, there it once is. Once again. See the car get up there in the gray. The back end comes around, and it's gone. Tough break for Dave Cutler his 50th start. Scott Pruitt. We're right down in the middle of that right now. Again, Stefan, what, any idea what happened to the other car out there? Sorry? Anything would happen with Cutler out there? I didn't hear. He didn't say anything to us. Just got away from him, got in the fence. Sorry? Just got away from him and got into up in the fence. Sorry, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't hear anything at all from him. Okay, thanks. Bob? All right, thank you, Scott. Dave Cutler climbs out. The drivers are told to open the visors of their helmet if they're okay, so that the safety team knows immediately the driver's condition, or at least the driver's impression of his own condition. And very disappointing on Cutler's part. His 50th start in an Atlantic Championship event, and he has been very fast on the ovals this year. Well, Top a, five guy in Milwaukee in practice, but didn't have the finish he wanted, and obviously not the finish he wanted here. Interesting story. Obviously an older man in a series full of young lions hungry to make their way up the ladder. For Dave Cutler, it's an exciting way just to exploit his love for motorsports. He simply loves racing these cars. You know, and he, he's the quintessential gentleman. He does a great job. He does a good job on the racetrack. He does a good job with faster traffic and just got away from him here today and bit him. So David Cutler's 50th start in the Toyota Atlantic Championship is now over. We are under caution once again. We'll take this opportunity for a break and return to Chicago Motor Speedway, Sweet Home Chicago. Welcome back to Chicago Motor Speedway, still under caution. Round six of the Toyota Atlantic Championship. There is your leader, Ryan Hunter Ray, over Michael Valiente in second place. We expect the green flag shortly. Scott. I'm down here. I was going to grab a quick, quick note with, uh, with, with Rick. Just coming off the green. It's exciting. How's things going? Everything seems to be all right right now. The guy's a little too much push, you know, a little more, little more push than we would like. So he's trying to dial it out right now. But it's a long race. The tires are going to get real hot. So he's got to hang in there right now and hopefully, you know, good finish. How conservative does he have to be with the tires to make, to make it make sense to the checkered flag? Well, I think he has to be careful if he's trying to work traffic that doesn't pull the car down too much and use the tires up too much too early. Well, that's that, down here. They got to be cautiously optimistic with these tires, Bob. All right, thank you, Scott. A lot of scrambling going on again. Drivers experimenting with the high part of that racing line, and that is a dance with the devil. But you heard him say, Rick Cameron say, he's got a little bit of push. That's understeer. He's turning the wheel, but the car doesn't want to turn as much as he's steering. And you saw Buddy Rice have the same problem coming to the corner. The car would not turn down. He got up in that gray. We know that's dangerous. And look at the lead that Hunter Ray has built up over Valiente. Macri trying to look inside Levine. Mm -hmm. Macri to pick up a spot. He started 10th. The 
It's underneath Rodolfo Levine. He was looking very good in the early laps of this race, and he gets up high. Boy, Whoa. the track has changed so much. You know, we haven't had a lot of running on this track. They started running yesterday morning, and it's a it's a funky line that's down. The champ cars are running a very, very different line than these Atlanta cars run. You see the rubber from the champ cars there. The champ cars come in, turn in very early, brake, and actually downshift two gears. These Atlanta cars don't. A slight breathe of the throttle, maybe a touch of the brakes. You see them a little bit higher at the edge of the corner there. They're actually about 20 miles an hour faster than the champ cars in the middle of the corner because they're not braking and downshifting the way the champ cars are, but they're also about 40 miles an hour slower into the corner. Look at Levine down on the inside of Macri. Trying to grab the spot back. So what you're saying, Brian, is essentially they're driving across the rubbered in racing line for the champ cars. And of course, the champ cars run on a different brand of tire than the Yokohamas on these machines. There's Sepp Koster, reported slight wall contact. He is in the pit lane. Let's see if we can take a look at what happened. Well, I guess we won't. <laughs> well, anytime you make some contact, even if it's however slight it is on an oval, you want to come in and get the car checked. If it bends something, you don't want to be driving around at 150 miles an hour and have something break. Smart to bring the car in. On board with Buddy Rice, currently in seventh. But if you look at the black rubber there, you can see how he comes above it on the way out. And as we follow the car down the front straight away, when he turns in for one, you'll see that he turns in a little above the IndyCar rubber. Just missed it there, but as you pointed to, the only time they're really on it is in the middle of the corner. So the car has a different effect. They're running on the asphalt, they get on that champ car rubber, it behaves differently, and then they're back on the asphalt and off that champ car rubber on the way out. The orange car is Rocky Moran Jr. from Sigma Autosports working the back of Valdemar Coronas, having his best race of the season by far for the Squadra 40 team. Corona's doing a great job, and you know, you talk to these young drivers a lot, and you tell them, look, you can only go as fast on an oval as the car will let you go, and Corona's obviously has a good car underneath him today. Good car on an oval, fun to drive, bad one. Bob, you can take it instead of me. <laughs> no, thank you. We're racing for the usual $100,000 purse this weekend. Oh, it looks like Seth Coster has to climb out to Scott Pruitt. Right down here. Step just stepped out of the car, and you can look. He's got a right rear bent tow link. Took the rear end out. He thinks he had a little bit of contact. I'm running over here to Sep right now, getting his helmet off. Sep, any idea? Any idea what happened? Did you have a little contact? Yes, Patiently await getting his helmet off here. It's off. Uh, coming out of turn four. Uh... I got budged down going in because I tried to pass Waringa and he ran me all the way to the inside wall. And on the exit, I think Dench wanted to go on the outside and uh, Figueroa was on the inside, so I was just stuck there. And somehow there wasn't enough room for Dench or something and he touched my rear wheel and bent the toe link, so it's unfortunate. Tough luck. We'll see you next week in Toronto. Bob? Oh, there's the replay as you were speaking, Scott. And that could have been very, very nasty. Rubber to rubber contact is extremely dangerous. Well, and you actually saw Frank Dunch's left front wheel in between the front and back tires there. And you get a wheel inside, you can put somebody up on their head like that. Not a good way to go open wheel racing. And Ryan Ray, put Ryan Hunter Ray has simply checked out. That's the lapped car of Carl Russo. He's gone by, and Russo gave him the room he needed to get by. We still have 33 laps to go, but about this point in time in the race in Milwaukee, there was a strange plume of black smoke from the back of Hunter Ray's car. I wonder if he's starting to hear noises already. <laughs> Don't even think about it. There you see the gap. He has put his head down. You remember at the Laguna Seca event, he put on a driving clinic trying to make up for that Milwaukee showing. He really was disappointed after Milwaukee. He put on a driving clinic. He's doing the same thing here. What a fantastic job he's doing, and they have given him a car that he can do this with on an oval. Followed the series earlier this year. There's some new sponsorship on the side pods of Ryan Hunter Race Car, Auto by Tell, Internet Automotive Marketing Services Company, with the Hilton Motorsports team for the rest of the season. Good look at Yasukawa there going past Carl Russo, Yasukawa, and Hunter Ray turning laps just about the same. Valiente actually just a little bit faster than they are. But on that restart, he got separated. And as they get into lap traffic, that's really going to hurt Michael Valiente and his charge back up. He kind of hang with Yasukawa a little bit. And Hunter Ray has built up a significant lead. It's Michael Valiente with Lynx Racing. He has about six car lengths to make up to 
Roger Yasakawa ahead of him. But right now, it's all about Ryan Hunter Ray, three seconds out in front of his teammate. We'll be back to Chicago in just a moment. <laughs> 